Okay, so here we have an example of putting together categorical statements into what is called a categorical syllogism. A categorical syllogism is an argument that relies on various categorical statements. Your book provides a way of determining validity of a categorical syllogism by use of a Venn diagram. And that is one way you can determine validity, and if you are interested in that way, see your book and, and you can learn that process. However, I'm going to provide a little bit of an easier process in determining validity. Um, first, we need to go over why this is a categorical syllogism. It's a categorical syllogism because it has two premises and a conclusion, and all of the things in it are categorical statements. So you will notice that we have a few different things at work here. We know we have an all statement here, and then we have neutron stars are things that produce intense gravity. And so this is our first premise, and it's a categorical statement of the type A. And because it's the type A, I'm sorry, because it uses the word all, we know it is a type A. Second, our second premise is all neutron stars are dense objects. So again, we have an all, so we know it is also a type A. Therefore, all dense objects produce intense gravity. Again, we have another all, and that would be a statement type of A. And this is the mood of the statement. The mood is the three different statement types that we have. We have an A statement, an A statement, and an A statement. So the mood of this is an A, A, A. Our next job is to figure out the figure of the statement. And to determine the figure, we need to do a few things. We need to first determine our middle term. And the middle term is the term that shows up in both premises, but not the conclusion. So we know we have all, and that's not the term. The terms are going to be neutron stars and things that produce intense gravity. Those are our terms. That's what we're ultimately talking about. All neutron stars, category neutron stars, P, are Q. And in this case, Q stands for things that produce intense gravity. And again, we have all neutron stars. We have our word R. And we have dense objects. So in this one, this is our first term, this is our second term. And what we're looking for to determine the middle term is what are the two terms that show up in our first premises, our first and second premises, but does not show up in our conclusion? Well, in this case, we have things that produce intense gravity. Well, does that show up in our concluding statement? It does. Objects that produce intense gravity. So we know that that's not the middle term. What about dense objects? We can also have dense objects. And we have dense objects here and dense objects here. So that also shows up in our conclusion. So the term that doesn't show up but in our conclusion but shows up in our first premises are neutron star and neutron star. And that's the first thing we need to determine when we're looking at figure, where the middle term comes. So basically, our middle term comes as the first term in the first premise. So we can put an M here, easy enough. And in the second premise, the middle term, neutron star, comes in the first position as well. Now our conclusion is always going to have two things, a subject and a predicate of its conclusion. And the subject is the thing that comes first. So in this case, dense objects is the subject. And the predicate is things that produce intense gravity. That's our predicate statement. And that's always going to be the case. Your conclusion will have in the first case the subject, in the second case the predicate. Always, always, always. So we have to look back. Where does for things that produce intense gravity show up in our premises? Well, it shows up in our first premise, but in the second position. So we take our predicate and we put it there. Right? First premise, second position. Then our subject term, dense objects, shows up in our second premise in the second position. We merely put an S there. So now we have a mood of AAA 
and a figure of MP, MS, SP. And what you do is you then uh, go to the sheet I gave you. I've provided it for you on Canvas. And using that sheet, you'll look down and you'll find your figure first. And once you find your figure, you'll find AAA to see 